So, the last video on this YouTube channel talked about the first overall pick from the 2022 NHL entry draft, Yuri Slavkovsky, and how the Montreal Canadiens went out there and decided to put him on the roster for 22-23. Now again, I'll reiterate the same thing I said then in this video, it doesn't really change the fact that there is a nine-game sample that Slavkovsky has the opportunity to show himself off within. If he's not good in the nine games, then okay, he'll get sent back down to Laval and everything is going to be okay. But when it comes to Slavkovsky being the first overall pick starting in Montreal, there was a tweet that I wanted to talk about when it comes to Slavkovsky and how it relates to last year's first overall pick as well, 2021 draftee Owen Power at the Buffalo Sabres. This is what Stephen Wino said. He works for the Associated Press, and he posted this tweet earlier yesterday. You can never be over-ready. Yuri Slavkovsky looks to be starting the season with the Canadians, but he could spend some time in the AHL. Owen Power got an extra year. As Kale McCarr has shown, not rushing prospects is sometimes smart. Then there is a little video, it's 49 seconds long, it's Kale McCarr going out there and talking about the NCAA development path and how he wasn't rushed into the NHL right away, which helped his development and allowed him to progress at his own pace. Kale McCarr, if we go over to his entire profile, just as a little caveat before we explore the main topic of this video, McCarr was a 2017 draftee by the Colorado Avalanche, fourth overall. And he had played two seasons with UMass in the NCAA before starting out his Colorado career in the playoffs of 2019. He had then made the team full-time in 2019-20, won the Calder with 50 points in 57 games played, and that was that. He has since been an over-point-per-game defenseman, and he is one of the best players in the world. Kale McCarr is insane, man. Like, I remember talking about him back when he was in UMass and saying that he was going to be this good, and he seems to really be living up to the potential. Meanwhile, if you go back to Owen Power, this is the status of him. He's 19 years old, was drafted first overall by the Sabres in 2021, and he had spent his draft plus one year with the University of Michigan, scoring 32 points in 33 games. He then played for the Sabres towards the end of the year, getting three points in eight games over there. He looked better as the stint went on, and he honestly did show off a few of the skills that made him projected as the first overall pick in the first place. But in 2022-2023, this is really going to be the time for Owen Power to show off what he's about. The Sabres already have one first overall left-handed defenseman in their system, that's Rasmus Dahlin. Dahlin made some comments earlier this week talking about how he really wants to be an elite player this season, and I definitely do think that he has the potential to be just that. He's such a good, young, talented defenseman. But for Owen Power, this is what was said by Elliot Friedman on the recent edition of the 32 Thoughts podcast, which is kind of why I'm making this entire video in the first place. I think, Friedman says, Owen Power could have a Makar-like existence, an effect on this team, and I don't think it's going to be too long until we're talking about him as one of the best players in the league. And, you know, it's easy to go out there and say that the first overall Owen Power is supposed to be good. For lack of a better word, good. He's going to be a good player. First overall, they're normally pretty good. But Kale Makar, damn. I mean... Kale McCarr is a top five player in the world. You could debate top three. Some would even go as far to say top two. He's really good. And so for Owen Power to go out there in a few years and have some sort of an impact on the Buffalo Sabres that is akin to Kale McCarr, I mean, I know first overall picks usually have a lot of pressure on them. We had just talked about Slavkovsky a few videos ago, but damn, that's a tall task, isn't it? Either way, when it comes to Owen Power and the way that he's going to play this season, I did have a few comments in the video yesterday saying, Hey, Lego, why do you think Maddie Beneers is going to win the Calder, man? Like, I mean, Owen Power's right there. He was the first overall pick. He was taken above Beneers, for crying out loud. And of course, it's just predictions, but at the end of the day, when it comes to Owen Power, you have to remember that a lot of the Calder voting just happens to be based on who else is there. Like, if Elias Pettersson was in the last year's Calder race with Kaprizov and Robertson, he would have won. If Barzal was in most Calder races, he would have won too. It all has to do with points and position and leads. If Sider was in the Calder race with Makar and Hughes, I don't know if he would have gotten that many votes because, sure, while he would have been an absolute amazing D-man, Makar and Hughes were also D-men and they had more points. So, yeah, it's all circumstantial. As for Owen Power, though, I definitely understand where Friedman is coming from, where it's like, okay, if Power becomes as good as he can be, he can be 
so important, like absolutely pivotal to the success of the Buffalo Sabres. It's just the way that Owen Power plays at his best is so different from how Kale McCarr plays at his best that I did think it was noteworthy to go out there and bring it up. Kale McCarr is not as big as Owen Power. He's sub six feet. Owen Power is six foot six. So there's definitely a difference in player body types here. Kale McCarr uses his size to his advantage, as he's really nimble, really quick, and he absolutely skates like a freight train. When he gets his legs moving, he can just power himself right down through the ice. When he's in the offensive zone, he can use his pivots, he can use his very strong puck protection ability, his deking, his shooting, his passing. It's all so refined that it allows him to be really a dual triple, quadruple threat offensive caliber player. If he's at the corner on the blue line, he has a few options. He can either dangle by a guy and power his way to the front of the net. He can dangle by a guy, power his way to the side, open up a passing lane and exploit that by finding a teammate, or he can just make a really good shot on goal, set up a rebound that way. He's got a lot of tools in his arsenal. For Owen Power, when it comes to how he's able to facilitate offense at his best, as we had seen in the NCAA and in the USHL in prior years, he's not really the same back and forth, pivoting around, dangling, puck protecting guy. He can make a nice pass. He can absolutely rip a puck on net too. But where Owen Power really excels is when he is in his own zone with the puck on his stick and he starts galloping right down the ice. Kale McCarr is a freight train on skates, but Owen Power is a freight train with two, three, four, ten carts stacked up behind it because he's got himself wheels that allow him to just go around the ice. He's a big dude, heavy dude, so when he really gets going, and he can get going, it's tough to slow him down. In the offensive zone, he's got good hockey IQ, he can make reads. There were some concerns about his defensive efficiency, which definitely brought themselves up in his draft season, plus the fact that he didn't really translate offensively right away to the NCAA, as other defenders had done. Even last season, I mean, Owen Power was outscored by... Luke Hughes, who is a fourth overall pick in the same draft. So while Owen Power definitely has had the raw tools to become an absolute beast, it was always really just how he applied those tools that people wanted to pay attention to and focus on. Okay, Owen, you gotta make sure you don't give the puck up when you come into the corner over here. You have to make sure that when you dump it in, there's a guy that's gonna be taking it back so your team can facilitate offensive zone time properly. You gotta make sure that in your own zone, you're cutting off passing lanes, you're stealing the puck, and you're exiting the zone effectively. Preferably with control, because that's where Owen Power excels the most when he absolutely gets going. If he pans out to the absolute best of his ability, I have no doubt that Owen Power can be a number one defenseman. It's just, the likelihood of him doing that was a lot less certain in the eyes of many people back in 2021 than it had been when people were looking at guys like Rasmus Dahlin, for example, who was a teammate of Owen Powers. He's got such a unique skill set and a mold of him being so big and powerful that, I mean, there really is just a lot of honing in to do on his skills before Owen Power becomes the effective monster of an NHL star that a lot of people thought he would be able to become. I don't know whether or not that happens this year, whether or not that happens in two years, three years. Makar was really good right off the bat. But when it comes to the Calder Trophy this season, it kind of goes back to that point that I made in the video yesterday. I do think Maddie Beneers is just so poised and mature already that the Kraken know that they're going to give him an opportunity and he's going to get a whole bunch of points because of it. And it might be good enough, probably is going to be good enough, in my opinion, for him to win that Calder Trophy. So for Elliot Friedman is a very interesting comparison being made here of Kale McCarr and Owen Power. You can talk to the comments your thoughts about this entire idea and how you feel it will translate into the short-term and long-term futures. I don't think anybody's expecting Owen Power to go out there and score 86 points in 70-something games like Kale McCarr did last season in 2022-2023, but still, if Owen Power goes out there and surprises us, I would not really say that that's a bad thing. I want to see this guy go out there and score as many points as possible. It's just, I mean, if I had to place money on it, which I won't, but like if I had to, I'd say maybe Power should aim for 35, 30 points. I mean, that's a lot of points for a defenseman in general. Maybe just 30, 25 to 30. There you go. Let's be a little bit more conservative there. I don't know. How do you feel about that? Am I being a little bit too harsh on the guy? I'm not sure. Buffalo Sabres fans, what are your thoughts on Owen Power and the Elliot Friedman, Kale McCarr comparison? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video. Trolls 99. And bye.